from Everton, who was part of the commanders who was accompanying the group to the borders <clears throat> with Botswana. He would have gone into Botswana, they, they dropped us. And then he would have come back, but he was arrested with us. He was one of as that responsibility from Comrade Joe Mudise, who had to leave the country when there were suspicion that he could be arrested. <clears throat> that arrest in June 1963, in a sense, it looks like it triggered off a, 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 an arrest of many leading comrades, particularly those who were active in MK throughout the country. It was during that time that uh, comrades like Luxmat, <clears throat> like Solomon Banjwa, and others from Durban, comrades like Caleb Msabi from Free State, <clears throat> and many comrades, particularly in the Transvaal, which included among others, comrades like uh, old man, <clears throat> um, Philip Matthews, uh, Elias Simu, <clears throat> comrades like Andrew Mlangeni, Eli, uh, quite a number of people, it looked like there was a huge arrest throughout the country in June. <clears throat> we were all shoved in the corner of 90 days detention without trial. In fact, there was a belief that uh, police stations in Pretoria were almost full. And there were interrogations undertaken this arrest also coincided with the arrests at the different provinces. Leadership in the Western Cape, <clears throat> Free State, Natal, including Transvaal, were arrested. That arrest was the big blow against the ANC and its military wing, Mkondo Isizu. In other words, recruits and recruiters, quite a big number was arrested. We were then put at different police stations in Pretoria to be interrogated perpetually. <clears throat> After many weeks of interrogation and arrest, many things happened. We were then, because of the space as we as we had, those who had been interrogated uh, that they would, that the special branch would need occasionally could now be put together because at the beginning we were all separated. Very few people were kept together. We were then. <clears throat> brought to the central prison, those that had been interrogated. I had spent my time in a police station in Pretoria called Hercules Police Station, where I was with other two comrades that were separated in the process of interrogation. Then would be brought to the central police station where we would be interrogated all the time. But finally, they took a decision that those who had been in the police stations, they should come together <clears throat> in the big prison where they could sit together now because we had, they, those that were now no longer under interrogation. <clears throat> we were then brought 
one day in the big prison, New York prison, we were then put in the same cell <clears throat> with a group of, we were a group of seven. First we were put as, as singles, in single cells, but the number was too big, I think, <clears throat> we're in because we were still in the middle of 90 days detention. We had been beaten up seriously. And I'm one of those who suffered because I did not understand Africans. And that I had to pay a price for it. Same day as we were brought in, later on the day, I think they changed their minds. We were then grouped into cells that could take six or seven people at a time. So we then brought it to this cell. <clears throat> That's when we met, whilst all of us were still serving 90 days detention. In the cell, <clears throat> besides myself, it was completely Andrew Mlangeni, our leader, Comrade Levi, who was taking us across town, an old man, Price Ndabane from Cape Town, Russell Mbani from Cape Town, Riot Mkwanazi from Durban, Justin Kuzwai from Durban, and myself. That concluded the number that we had in our set. We were meeting there and having to know one another. <clears throat> Here were two leaders who were with us, Comrade Andrew Langen and <clears throat> Comrade Levi Lombard Mbata, our commander. It was on this very day as we arrived with excitement that we were coming together, etc., And we did not know that in prison, we are not allowed to make noise. So we're laughing and joking and excited. And suddenly the door opened and indeed, a warder carrying a stick, very agitated, asked a question in Afrikaans. Who is making noise? Why are you making noise? We mark Rasi, so at that time I could not pronounce that word. I got to know it as I stayed in that cell. In prison, you are not allowed to make noise. You will sit tomorrow without food, three mal day. <clears throat> um, I did not understand this was said in Africans, and Comrade Mlangeni and Bata seemed to be the only two who knew Africans. My surprise was that the three comrades coming from Cape Town, which I thought was an Africans area, they did not know Africans either. Partly, they, they, they came from the Eastern Cape to work in Cape Town, as I learned later. And therefore, this man was angry. He said, You're my grass, he saw. Mora, Mora, he shall play son of course, three mal day. Now, we did not understand what this man was saying, and I'm sure up to now I'm not saying it right. And there was an argument between the two leaders who knew Africans. But I explained to us that we have been punished that tomorrow. There will be no food because we are making noise. In prison, you are not supposed to make noise. Blangel said, Mfuetu, sorry. He used to call Mbata Mfuetu. We are making a mistake. He is just telling us, he's being good to us, he's telling us that what we've eaten now is our last meal, supper. We'll only eat tomorrow. But I said, no, no. He's saying, tomorrow, no food. Could not agree. Mlangeni said, 
I, I, I studied Africans, I know it. <clears throat> but I said, Comrade Mlange, this is prison Africans. You won't understand it. And they couldn't agree. <clears throat> and then we all said, okay, let us hear tomorrow morning. Let us see what happens. <clears throat> tomorrow morning, we went out to have our baths and clean our buckets because there were no toilets except the buckets that we had to clean ourselves every morning and afternoon, which means you would sit in the cell, do everything there, <clears throat> whilst other comrades are sitting. It was an alternative. Of course, we did not eat breakfast. So Bata was proved right that this is prison Africans. <clears throat> that was the beginning of a process. Now, it is absolutely important for us to understand that the arrest in 1963 was one of the big blow that the apartheid regime delivered to our struggle. As you would know, and I think it is important to underline this point even before <clears throat> I discussed how we shared and how we behaved in the cell with the comrade <clears throat> Isi and Rumlange. Clearly, <clears throat> clearly, the ANC, as it waged a struggle, comrade Rumlange belongs to those who came at the right time into the ANC, joining the ANC in the very beginning of the 1950s. It was when the ANC was changing from a stance <clears throat> of being an organization that is clear what it is looking for, determined to liberate the South African people at all costs, but wanting to do it in a manner that was reasonable, understandable, that everybody must feel part of a new country that is going to emerge. And I'm sure, comrades, you will recall that um, at the close of the 40s, the ANC Youth League, which had just emerged, had very clearly indicated that they cannot continue like the old leadership was. They wanted action. In their conference of 1949, took a decision to recommend a program of action to the mother body. And indeed the mother body adopted that proposal from the ANC Youth League which talked about the need to undertake a number of actions to move away from just statements. And one of the recommendations was the <clears throat> matter of undermining the racist laws, which was called the defiance campaign. In other words, that the oppressed must defy, must conduct a campaign where they defy the laws which were apartheid laws. They must not be respected as the laws of our country because they were meant to oppress the African people or the black people in general and African people in particular. It was this time that you saw people like Comrade Mlangeni coming into the fore. Comrade Mlangeni, who had been working and in the trade unions and had participated in the strikes in the, in the company that he was working in, Padco Company, 
and therefore he was already an activist. And therefore coming in as, 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 as a young <clears throat> kind of league, uh, part of that organization where they coined, <clears throat> a coined an expression that said freedom in our lifetime. And we joked with uh, Comrade Mlangen at times that Comrade Mlangen, we introduced this during a time from the Youth League. Will freedom come during our time? And he said, yes, and he was right. Freedom came during his time. But it is important that therefore, as Mlangen came in, he became part of the volunteers and the volunteer corps. And therefore, the changing of the ANC, Mlangen was part of it, and many other comrades. <clears throat> comrades Thomas Nkowi, comrades like uh, former Secretary General Afrenzo, and many. It was this time that shaped the ANC differently from other political parties whether in the country or in the continent. Because it was this time that the ANC said, we need our freedom. And there was indeed <clears throat> a call which said, if you are talking about freedom, what type of freedom are you talking about? How do you define this freedom? particularly after the defense campaign, for the defense campaign, among other things, as it was argued very vehemently by our leader, Udatu Madiba, arguing at some point with <clears throat> those who were forming what used to be called, who had formed what used to be called the unity movement, who were talking about the galvanization of the masses before you do anything. He was arguing that the masses must be galvanized by action. You can't just galvanize them by theoretical discussions only. The masses don't just discuss theory, but they must participate. And therefore the defense campaign had been a planned thing to try to take the ANC from one level to the other. And the ANC had reached a level where they felt it needed to define <clears throat> what type of freedom do we want. And whilst the ANC had all the material to do so, but the ANC took a decision that this is a struggle of the people, and therefore we need the people to participate in telling us as to what type of freedom do they want. Thus, therefore, for the volunteers of the ANC, which included Comrade uh, Mlangen, had to undertake for the first time a door-to-door -door campaign, going from house to house, from factory to factory, asking people, what type of freedom do you want? And volunteers collected all what was said by the people at all levels the workers, the peasants, the intellectuals, the women, the youth, etc. Those complaints and suggestions were then put together into a charter, which was called the Freedom Charter, which then had to be adopted, to be discussed and adopted by a Congress, by a conference, by a huge conference for the first time in the country ever, called the Congress of the People, which began to say when we talk of freedom, we are not just generalizing, but we are saying we are dealing with the freedom where there should be equality, because our country was ruled by <clears throat> a minority that was saying only them have the rights. Some charter became our own 
our own direction and understanding where we're coming from. And this indicated that therefore talking about freedom was not just talking about freedom in general, but you're talking about freedom that you could define, you could specify. Mlangeni comes from that kind of situation. It is also important that it was as, as the regime realized that this kind of definition of freedom was against their own ideological thinking or whatever. They then conducted a big national arrest of leaders of the ANC and the Alliance <clears throat> to charge them with high treason. So the situation had been changing in South Africa from just <clears throat> saying we need equality, we need freedom and everything. You reach a stage where we're saying we need freedom and this is what South Africa should look like. And they said these are communist ideas and charge the leadership. <clears throat> and it is absolutely important Therefore, to see the ANC changing from quantity to quality, even with quality, more quality, and higher levels. Because it is this time where the enemy said, we now have to arrest these people. It was burning leaders individually, burning the organization as well in 1960, and therefore saying, kill the struggle. At this time, the debate was, what do we do? Should we continue the old traditions of non-violent struggle, or should we declare the armed struggle? That is a debate I'm sure comrades could have, because there was an interesting debate that was debated within the ANC, within the alliance. The alliance, just to clarify this, the alliance then was the ANC, uh, was the South African Indian Congress, was Colored People's Congress, was Congress of Democrats, and it was as well SACTU, the South African Congress, now we are talking about that was behind uh, these discussions and finally a decision was taken after a long debates that yes the time for armed struggle has come and that led to the birth of a military wing of the African National Congress um, and therefore which meant the policy of the ANC changed. There was no longer a soft way of fighting we have declared war um, an organization called Mkondo Sizwe had emerged because at the end of the debates, when the agreement was done, the president of the ANC, <clears throat> Inko C. Chief Albert Lutuli, as we're discussing the name, he said, you know, if we have been fighting somewhere, some people or somebody, and that somebody follows you to our own home. And once you get to our home, <clears throat> the weapon that you have in your house is a spear. And you, you, you have to defend your family and everything. And therefore, you take your spear. And he said, this, this was an analogy. We've reached a stage where we must now take our spear. And therefore, this organization that is going to be born must call it the spear of the nation in Kondo Things had changed. 
I'm trying to indicate that when the arrest came in 1963, the change, the times had changed in South Africa. Mkondo had emerged in 1961. Imagine with sabotage, wherein comrades like Mlangeni participated. But what is important, what is important to bear in mind is that to Comrade Mlangeni, given the fact that they were your second layer leadership in Johannesburg and nationally, they were at the cutting edge of these changes. Mlangeni became one of the few, probably five or so, who were identified, including Comrade uh, Joe Kabi among them, <clears throat> Raymond um, Saba, <clears throat> who were then a part of a group that was sent secretly out of to go and train in China. And nobody knew they'd ever gone to China because the leadership, the high command, in order to start the armed struggle, you needed comrades who would have been <clears throat> militarily prepared to help participate in establishing MK and commanding the operations of MK in the country. And Mlangen was one of them. And therefore, when these arrests were taking place, it was clear that they were trying to kill the armed struggle, our enemy. And once they, they, they arrested this group of 52, which comprised of cadres from all four provinces, and that's why the leaders were arrested. And that's why the enemy thought we must deal with the MK structures. You will also recall that a year before 1963, 1962, our leader, Commander in Chief of Umkondo Sizwe, Umantiba, had been arrested after reporting of his trip that he had taken outside of the country. And he had been tried, convicted for five years. He was the first prisoner to be sent to Robben, Robben Island. So during this time in 1963, when we were arrested, <clears throat> this big arrest I talked about, arrested a number of our leaders, very top leaders, were all brought to Pretoria. We were cadres, young cadres who were going out for military training when we were arrested in Khot Mariko near Zirast. And then for, we had to serve our 90 days in Pretoria. That's why we met with Comrade Mlange. I just wanted to give this background that this happened because we had gone through this kind of period. And of course, it was a bonus. While we were in prison, we were happy to be arrested together with the leaders as young cadres of MK. And indeed, we got to know that Mlangen was one of the leading cadres as we stayed in prison. A very gentleman-like comrade, very easy to go. He said, I need my cigarette here in the cell. And, and, and Levine Bata, who had a bit of knowledge of what happens in prison, he said, look, in prison, 
you will have very difficult, difficult situation. He said, look, I'm not convicted. I need my cigarette. He knocked at the door. He called the warders and said, my cigarette to smoke. They said, but prisoners are not allowed to smoke. He fought to a point that he had to be taken out of the cell to be punished. And I realized this comrade is very brave. He was punished for it. And he was brought back for us to stay with him. A wonderful comrade. We spent a lot of time together as we're looking forward towards finishing our 90 days detention. He was an easy go area, I mean, a comrade. And I loved politics to discuss politics even at that time. I thought I'm going to worry him. Also getting to know that he came from the unions because I also came from the unions. <clears throat> So I said, let us, we have time, let us discuss politics. So we had to discuss issue from issue to issue. And he was very helpful to help us understand politics. And I used to worry him <clears throat> because I suspected he must be a communist. Just my suspicion. So I said, Comrade Mlangen, can you give us a definition of a nation? What is a nation? Adhem Fanagit. Hey, in Dabakulu Leo Stalin, read Stalin, read Stalin's book, and a fun with this gas. He's selling him super high and challenge. And we develop. A friendship with Comrade Mlangen, my leader, just to refer to him. And, and for some reason, until now, <clears throat> before his departure, Whenever we met, I called him Reverend Mkwena. <laughs> Why I called him Reverend Mkwena? As you heard, that as the ANC started the armed struggle, had to train cadres who'd know how to operate underground, who'd know how to enhance the, A, the, the ANC in, 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 in the form of MK, the kind of activities. So he, Joe Kabe and others, as they came back from abroad, they were in the leadership of establishing MK and taking into account the recruitment, etc. They would receive people as they come to Joburg, take them across. They were part of that kind of structure. He used to go to, among others, I mean, to all provinces, but he went to the free state wearing the attire of a peace, a priest, a pastor. His name of this reverend was Reverend Mufuke. And that was and Rumlangen in disguise to people that who did, who did not know him. And when the arrest came and people were beaten up and some were talking, some said we met Nkwena in the area where Comrade Caleb Msabe was staying, who was quite a hefty person, we saw him. The special branch arrested that reverend Nguena, thinking this was the man. And the man never knew nothing about the ANC, it was just a reverend. But it happened that those who were being beaten up were saying, well, they, with the person they met was Reverend Nguena. He was put in the, in the car, as we hear, as we heard from uh, <clears throat> Comrade Caleb Msavi, the two of them were put at the back, two big leaders, Caleb, Caleb Msavi and this reverend.
charge. But they had not separated us. Only after some time, they then separated us, took from that big group, Comrade Andrew Mlangeni, Comrade uh, Mtsualedi, away to join the Ravonia trialists. In fact, they were shocked that uh, particularly Comrade Mlangeni, that Comrade Levi Mbata was not taken. And Mbata himself was shocked. But fortunately, he remained with us, Comrade Mbata. So Mbata, Karimeng, uh, <clears throat> Comrade Philip Matthews, and that day Philip Matthews and others, we were then charged separately from the big case. Because the big case was taking place at the high court, we then had to be tried at the synagogue court where the prison trial is, where we were, 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 were tried. These cases ran Palare. In fact, we're consulting Palare. Their worry was what would Comrade Mbata get from us, particularly the worry of Mlangeni in particular, and Mzaled. Now, as we got to know, these comrades were the ones who were moving among the provinces and reporting back to the high command. And therefore, that's why they had to be charged with the high command. Because on the day we were sentenced, we had floor, they were on the lower floor of the prison to open up a window and talk through. Langen used to communicate with comrade Levine Bata. And, and the first thing, what is your conviction? Meaning, comrade uh, <clears throat> uh, Levine Bata. Levine Bata started from below saying that the lowest uh, uh, conviction was five years of two comrades. And he counted all of us were a group of 10, and there were 11, 12, etc. And then Mbata was 20. Once he said so, Langeni kept quiet and closed the window. Of course, he gave the report to others, but he was shocked because it was clear that if Mlangeni, if Levine Mbata got 20, then the Vonia trial would not, would be difficult to escape that sentence as, as we were thinking etc. But this is the comrade I'm talking about, a comrade that therefore emerged as one of our stalwarts, that as we went to the struggle, as we were beginning the process, they had to spend 27 years in prison. Mulangeni was not just in Istituland, because he was part of a group, but because he was such a comrade that many who worked with him with the ANC, you could not tell him any other thing. He lived the ANC. When the ANC wanted volunteers, he was there to be a volunteer. When the ANC wanted soldiers, he was there to be the soldiers. And of course, Mlangeni was a very, was a political animal. He believed in the ANC policies. He believed in freedom charter. And I'm sure as we say goodbye to him, we need to promise him that we are going to fulfill the task that was given to all of us by the people of our country, that we should implement the Freedom Charter. Because the Freedom Charter is a document that was produced by the people under the leadership of the ANC. But it says you need to change the lives of our people 
We need to bring equality. We don't need to create new policies. The policies are there. I'm sure, as we used to talk to him, that we have not yet completed the, 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 the implementation of the Freedom Charter so that we can change the quality of our lives. I'm sure, comrades, after 25 years, we must be as clear as anything that the answer to deal with the legacy of apartheid and poverty in our country is the implementation of the Freedom Charter. This remains our challenge as Comrade Mlangeni leaves us, and I'm sure we should not hesitate to point the direction as it were. We cannot avoid it. We cannot look aside. He was part of it. He was a delegate in Clip Town, in Congress of the People. And this is what he, he, he fought for. And he knew we have not achieved the final. It remains with us who are remaining to implement the policies and to reshape the ANC for the task that it is faced with when it was faced with the task of trying to convince the enemy, they said, peaceful. They said, let us talk. They said, let us find a solution. When the ANC realized they were not responding, they then said, we need to act. We need to have action, programs of actions, which must end up the armed struggle. And that's what the ANC did in our political freedom. We now need our economic freedom. And we've got, if this is the phase we must now know is our last phase. And we cannot pretend we have done it, we haven't. So I'm sure Comrade Mlangeni will go with that hope and it is our task, particularly those who are still young. We are in a phase where we've got to use the method that fits this, and the methods are, methods are there. The Freedom Charter is our direction. Key elements of the Freedom Charter need to be implemented so that our people will say, what do we ask the ANC to do? The ANC has done it. And nobody else will do it except us. Because my belief is that our policies are superior to policies of whatever political party you have. But it is us, us and implementation. And therefore, I will want to say, is it Comrade Andrew Mlangeni, my leader, my comrade and my friend, you were able to see freedom and lived during the time we enjoy our political freedom, but not our economic freedom. The radical <clears throat> transformation of the economy is what we are left with is a task I believe all comrades understand remains with us. And it is now, not at the time. Hambagasle, Chawada Makawe, Hambagasle is Thank you very much.